Live from Paradise Studios in New York, Strong Island Television presents Unger the Radar, starring Randy Unger. Brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Tonight, Randy will be reviewing the new films Hashtag Digital Lives Matter, Stuck, and Hellboy with special guest critics Erica A., CJ Oakland, and Jason Konigsberg. Randy will also be interviewing filmmaker Madeline Olnick of the new dramedy Wild Nights with Emily. And now, here's your host, Randy Unger. Hey guys, welcome to Unger the Radar. I'm your host, Randy Unger, where we talk all things film. And I've got a wonderful panel of guest critics tonight. Uh, Mr. Jason Konigsberg. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me back. Of course, anytime. Erica A., hello. Nice to be back. Yeah, well, it's been a while. Yes. Okay. Well, I had my little project that I couldn't get here all winter. Okay. Well, you're here. Yes. You're ready. And Mr. C.J. Oakland. Yeah, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> yeah, you're basically part of the furniture at this point. I know. I, I just sit over there. Like, when I'm not on the show, I'm just napping all, all no, yeah. Oh, yeah. You live here now. Yeah. <laughs> cool, guys. So we've got three movies to talk about. Uh, we'll dive right in. Uh, first off, a disappointment, unfortunately. Um, d hashtag Digital Lives Matter. It's the actual title. It actually has a hashtag in there. And it's basically about this insta-famous uh, celebrity. He's a rapper, actor, uh, who's, um, who's Facebook, uh, who's tr all, basically all his social media gets wiped out. He has no more followers. And basically he has tr trying to find out, um, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, he's trying to get to the bottom of it. And yeah, it stars uh, DC Youngfly. There he is. And Basically, I think you said this on Twitter, he's a, a poor man's Chris Tucker. That's exactly what I said on <laughs> yeah. Twitter. Never before have I missed Chris Tucker more than I did. Yeah. I would rather watch Rush Hour 2, 3. three. I wish they made on Rush Luke. Hour 7. Yeah. Okay, the, because this was, and, and I always considered Chris Tucker kind of a poor man's Chris Rock. Yeah. But uh, to, a, to an extent. Right. But I just really, this was it's, really excruciating. Yeah, the whole movie, he really was doing a Chris Tucker impersonation. Like, yeah, I saw that the whole time. It was worse than that. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. just the problem that he, besides the fact that he, he sounded but, like him and, and acted like tried him and tried to tried to, to be, be the next yeah. Chris Tucker or Kevin Hart even in some right. ways. I would take Kevin Hart any day. Yeah. I, I would, I would you know Kevin I don't Hart like him for the right. upside. But I don't like him either. Yeah. The insufferableness <laughs> of overindulging the millennials with oh, a message yes. that was yes. so yes. mixed up between the fact that the problem with society and the contributing to it, yeah. it didn't even know what its own message was. Right. You're giving this movie more credit than I am, even thinking <laughs> that they had messages to send. No, well, yeah, this movie yeah. definitely well, tries to send a title. message, but it doesn't make any sense because <laughs> they're trying to be like, we're going to do digitalized matter, which... I think on the basis of it, it's supposed to be about a guy who's famous because he has three million followers, but just views them as like a block, not as people. Or as a but set of numbers. But it's trying to blackmail him to go like see individual people and like learn a lesson, which could be interesting if it's like a famous person having to connect back with people. Yeah. Except the problem is uh, they never really do that <laughs> no, at they all. Don't. No, they don't. Filmmakers should focus more on learning how to make a competent movie, yeah. beginning, yeah. middle, and end, than uh, uh, and how to this make message. lines. Yeah. I mean, I think my favorite part of the movie, unfortunately, was the part where we watched the map. Go you around. have a favorite part? That was, oh, that was enjoyable to you? You're giving that this movie a lot more any, credit than I am. Any point that they spoke. So it's a mystery, but like no. the way they go it's about when, it. It's not. I didn't get exactly. mystery from it at no, all. Mystery. No, it's not a mystery because no. that means something gets resolved. What happens is he goes to a friend and says, find this person for me. And then every 20 minutes or so comes back and is like, have you found the person? No. Have yeah. you found the person? No. We found him. Let's go meet him. Okay, yeah. we met him. We're done. No, there's also the problem <laughs> with, oh, yeah, let's get in a car and drive around. Let's get on a bicycle. This is like cheap humor. Look, we're bicycling. Yeah. This is funny. In the beginning, I thought this would be like a nice commentary on social media and society, but the way they handle it, there's no it's message really. Social yeah. It, yeah. There yeah, could you have been saw what they were going for, yeah, yeah. the audience they were appealing the, the to. The intent yeah. was good, but the actual execution the yeah. was just I think fell part flat. of the problem is that DC Youngfly is like an actual Instagram person. Like he yeah. played himself in this movie. Yeah. Like he was I couldn't tell if he was playing a parody of himself because I have no idea who he is. Like <laughs> neither do every I, time yeah. he kept trying to do his catchphrase, I couldn't tell what he was doing until like the third yeah. time I'm like, 
oh, that's probably his catchphrase. And then I looked <laughs> it up and saw, oh, he's playing himself. Yeah. And I think if they had made it a character, like if he had been like an Instagram person and then said, in this movie I'm playing a famous Instagram person and go more over the top or do something different. But this movie was about his brand yeah. and... He's probably, like, if he does have that many followers, he probably does good comedy that's good in short bursts. Like, yeah. he knows how to do some videos that are good, but it doesn't lend you to being an actor, unfortunately. No, no, like, no. Like, you can't go to, an act, go to, like, an audition, which is ironically what this movie's about, is he wants to be, an, he's an Instagram person who wants to be an actor, so right. he's going to a movie audition. Yeah. And, like, even when he finally gets to the audition, all he does is say his catchphrase. He's not showing that he can play a character or anyone. He's just doing what he does for a longer period of time, and it doesn't work. It's basically a documentary. No, I, mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's a documentary. Say, yeah. it's, not, it be. it's not a mystery. It's not a it's documentary. So, I thought it was fun, funny film, comments. Stop giving people it who titles. Funny <laughs> to themselves and in small bursts, but just filming themselves and just putting it together. Like, there wasn't a director who knew how to get, like, a good performance or a good scene out of them, who knew how to, like, put a story out of this like yeah. it was you could tell this was everybody sat down thought up different ideas and they just kind of shoved it together and said let's mm. film this so everyone can do this yeah. we're going to try and show ourselves and get more uh, fame and like followers and like show what we can do but it doesn't serve them well unfortunately like there are a few moments where they seem kind of funny but they're trying desperately oh. to like imitate every actor who's come before them. Hmm. Unfortunately, like they're doing more of trying to imitate people than being who they are. It, and they as think comedians. they think they're being clever, you know, with the whole with the title, with the way they go about the plot, yeah, like it's the way the credits sense. were with yeah. the hashtags yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere. Even the way even they the, try. Even the, the map, like kind of Uber. That's yeah, the thing I'll I mean, give them. I, I didn't said. mind the map and that. like the way the text messages were shown. I've seen it done a lot worse in other movies, so that mm. wasn't bad. But that's, like, the only thing I can give this movie is, like, <laughs> the special effects on, like, how you show certain things wasn't that bad. Yeah. It was done better than other movies have right. been done, so. And the relationships between the characters, like, that new girl who shows up, who kind of helps. They just throw in characters yeah. out for no yeah. reason. It has just a really... Yeah, I didn't know what happened. Yeah, no one was set up. It's just 40 minutes in, we're going to be like, oh, we're going to introduce this person. This yeah. person. What do they do? I have no idea. Yeah. It just has and a, they're just going to now take over the plot. Very indie feel that and just kind of, yeah, falls that's flat. That's a compliment to itself. <laughs> Maybe I'm a, I'm a little it generous with this movie. You're, I think, <laughs> I think a generous. couple of you are generous. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't even... Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this was bad. Hashtag digital lives yeah. matter, but this movie does not. Does my not favorite matter. thing Subtract about it... Okay. My yeah. Sorry, my favorite thing about digital lives matter is them trying to say that, like, in the frame of the movie, this became, like, a global phenomenon where, like, it's being mm -hmm. spread and, like, people are doing good things to help each other. Mm. But as they're trying to explain how the digital lives matter trend took off, it's with a local news report mm -hmm. of a local news reporter talking to a woman at a grocery store about how her neighbor came up to her, her neighbor's son came up to her and gave her $50 yeah. and said digital lives matter. And that's how they show that it's people doing good deeds for other people. I'm like, nothing in that entire story <laughs> or how it was reported has anything to do with digital or social media presence. <laughs> so how is that digital lives matter in any way? Mm. That was a human being. Yeah, no, I know that part. And I was like, like they're trying to do like heck? it as a pay it forward thing, but it's like, it's that's just, not digital. Yeah. If you're just going to help people in the street, that's not digital. Oh, yeah. I mean, right. I thought the only time that it actually tried to show that there's an other way to show digital lives was when the two twins actually made a video but they made it that their lives matter not that the guy proved digital lives actually matter it lost its meaning it lost its message yeah. it lost any value of a movie and <laughs> all the characters just threw themselves back and forth through the story none of them actually had a reason for being so there pointless. or who they or what they were doing there what they were why they were connected to each other why they even cared yeah. besides they could yeah. hold their phone up and talk into it <laughs> I it's, yeah guys yeah. people watching skip this one yeah. it doesn't work because it's, it's sad they're trying Torpedo to say like it long before he's a it famous the person radar. who wants to reconnect with people and learn to be nice people right but the problem is as the movie goes on his version of comedy is he insults like the people he's talking to mm -hmm. and he does that like every time he meets someone and gives them like a little bit of nice advice he then makes a joke about them like their appearance or like a speech impediment like he right. just <laughs> makes a joke about them every time all the way up to the end of the movie so it's like how is your message that he's getting nicer and right. learning to be nice no, he's people not a, he's when not a he insults every person he meets? He's, he doesn't change. He's not a good guy. Anything about him was funny. It was no. just annoying. Very annoying. Very annoying. And the, te the, the catchphrase was just irritating as well. Yeah. I'm, not I'm even sure gonna, that's fine on Instagram. I'm not going to repeat kind of it even though I'm thinking it. All right, guys. So skip this one. Yeah. And on to our next. Uh, unfortunately, Jason, you did not have a chance I to see it. I did not see Stuck. No. But I recommend this one. Um, okay. So it's called Stuck. And basically, it's a musical set in a, sub a New York City subway train about a group of strangers, six strangers, who are stuck together. And basically, they all have their own little lives that intersect with one another. And it's got like a rent 
kind of feel to it. I yeah, that's what I took away from this. But CJ, what did you think of Stuck? Uh, like it's definitely interesting. Like this started off as a play that then uh, got put on, uh, made as a movie, which it was interesting. Like the music was done kind of well, yeah, though. It was like I like each of the singers was pretty well. Like the characters were okay, but I felt like they didn't really go deep enough. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of moments where characters mm -hmm. will say like will bring up this uh, very important topic or like right. bring up something about themselves and everyone is kind of like dealing with it. But I feel like I don't know that anyone was changed that much by the end. Like there's a few things. Well, but... one per I think one character. I won't give, yeah. give it away, but. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's what it's building up to, but I feel like mm. they're trying to say that these people affected each other's lives and I just don't know if I really see that too much from yeah. how it's portrayed. Okay, you, you, they could have so, dug a little deeper. Yeah, it's not bad. It's like, it's not as good as like a movie like, uh, well, not the movie. The play, like Rent, is really good. But yeah. like, I the think the movie's uh, not bad too. The movie I have mixed feelings about, but it's like okay. there's just a for this movie of just people stuck in a train and singing to each other. It's interesting, but I don't know yeah. that it needed to be a musical too much. Like I don't know yeah. the music added a few things, but I don't know if it was done as well in a movie. Well, I selected this movie because of the cast. And Jason, you might be able to jump in here. You've got Giancarlo Esposito. I like him. He plays yeah. a homeless guy Breaking on the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a phenomenal actor. Do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also Amy Madigan. Uh, she plays a mother who's lost her son to, I think, cancer, right? And she's basically talking, singing about that. Mm. And there's a few other young, um, other subway riders yeah, on the train. Yeah, there's a Shanti is in there. Yeah, Shanti, thank you. Yeah. Which was brilliant. I mean, I didn't... I said yeah, I didn't expect early, that. I didn't even notice it was her because I totally separated her from yeah. I'm being a fan of her music. Well, I, I only know the names. Like, the, okay. yeah, like I here? saw it in the credits, and I'm like, ooh, Shanti's in this. And then I realized like, it was her. And like, as they're acting, like, all the singing is pretty good. And then as Shanti starts singing, it's like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. a singer. <laughs> yeah. And then it kind of like dips back down, because everyone was like a good enough actor, and they kind of sing themselves. And it's like, mm. it's kind of, it's better than like Les Mis. Where it's like they have people who seem like they're able to sing a bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, the, 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 like the movie. movie. That, the movie. Play. That's what I meant. Russell like, Crowe. Russell Crowe. Crow. <laughs> you know, like, that's what I meant. They were all different styles Terrible of singing too. Singer. Yeah. yeah so. But it's like that then you cool. have someone who's a professional singer start singing, and it's yes. like, okay, now yeah. I can hear it. And you could tell they were focusing on live singing and like yeah. this because yeah. that was what they wanted. Yeah. All this talk about a subway and different stories on subway. Did anyone see? It was from the late '90s. Really good, made for HBO movie called Subway Stories. Yes. No. There you go. It. That is a. It's just making me think. Well, that. that's a one, really smart. That's not a musical. Be, not a musical. But no. this comes nowhere near to that. Oh, wow. oh, this right. is a movie that does an okay job telling dramatic stories that then get chopped apart by musicals. Yeah. Oh. I, the other one was just you know yes. a bunch of different stories of characters yes. that Who's didn't in, intersect. What are some of the Gregory names? Hines, oh, uh, Dennis yes. Leary, uh, who else? Uh, Mercedes names. Ruel. Oh, nice. um, a lot of other people, and they had different directors. That's a great cast. Segment. The three yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, that. there was a. F there's many, many others. You go on. You look it up. Is this a, a, is this a, is a feature or is it a? Series? It was an HBO movie. It was an, oh, H a, it was an HBO, HBO project movie. Yes. Late 97, 98. Back when they first then, started yeah. their own things, oh, okay. they get yeah. like Golden Globe nominations. Nice. Correct. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And but it's, no, it's a pretty good was, movie. Yeah. yeah. Stuck was not that. Stuck okay. was. <laughs> An okay musical. If you're a musical fan, definitely go see it. The songs were not it. stellar. The songs were not stellar. The length of it sometimes got a little... It could have been a little longer so we could have had more character development, I think. Okay, At some of the plots could have been longer and some yeah. of the things could have been a little more... Let's tell the story instead of more having these weird sure. staring at each other moments. Yeah. Did Gus fr from Breaking Bad sing at all? He did. He, did. They all he wasn't awful. Yeah. No, he, he no. was okay. Here's the thing I like, though, is that they introduce it where it's like a starts off with a packed subway car and like he's the only yes. one on first. Mm -hmm. And then he starts singing and it's like doing this. But then people look weird because it's it's a homeless man. And I couldn't tell if he's singing the song and everyone's able to hear it. Like if he's yeah, living yeah. in a musical and just I singing think, yeah. and no one else knew. But then but, it's like when everyone else is there, they start singing and that's just them telling the story. But they're not like actually I think the, singing the, in real the, life. the songs were kind of like a fantasy element. Yeah, it's yes. like you're having this well, conversation yeah, yeah. and we show it as a song. They, they just step away from the plot to just sing. But I think this movie could have benefited without the songs. Like, I like a enjoyed, New York, New York like City story. I would have enjoyed that the movie more without the songs, but that's just because I'm sometimes not a fan of musicals. Mm -hmm. 
What did you guys think of the acting? Did you like Giancarlo? I thought the acting was decent. Yeah. One thing I regret though is in the production value. They did not shoot on the same subway car. Oh, this this is a nitpicky thing, I think. No, but. this is a person that's <laughs> a media person, not a critic. Okay, it's no, no. A person who looks at things from the production value, from the camera angles, from mm -hmm. the audio value, from the lighting, that they let us see at times that it's a different train because you can actually see the number. Right, right. You can see which <coughs> letter it is because the New York City subway is an alphabet and a set of numbers. There's one shot of exterior shot of the train where you could see like an, a little bit of orange, which is the yes. F line. And then, unless it's the B or the D, but right. it doesn't have a circle, you can clearly see the line. So right. therefore it's the F. And okay. then at times it's the one train. Right. And then like yeah. you said, at times which is the red it's line. the C. Right, right, right. If I and did I'm, notice that, that would bother me. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, why do they keep showing shots of that? Yeah. That was a fault on the editor's part or the director's part that they should not have let that happen. But because everything it destroys else destroys the illusion was that they're trapped on a train. They're right. supposed to be stuck. But it was great though, you hear when you're hearing the, the announcer. The doors, the sound for the doors closed. Yes. That was very accurate, and I was, I respected that. So, Jason, are you a, a musical fan? Uh, when people ask me that, I always say my favorite movie musical is The Blues Brothers. Oh wow! So yeah, I, <laughs> okay. I like musicals, but to me, no movie musical is better than The Blues Brothers. Ah, uh, John Landis. That's absolutely. It's got everything. Great songs, mm -hmm. classic songs. Great, well, you, you know, and great cameos. You've great got, cameos. Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin. Oh yeah, uh, James Brown. Wow. Uh, so many, so many talented okay. people in that movie. Well, but I, but I do enjoy musicals. Nice. When no, they're I think really the good. musicals died with the end of the age of the musicals in the old movies. Well, the sound of music is then when people say that's not a musical because yes, they get all high and mighty when I say Blues Brothers is my favorite. Okay. Then I give them my other favorite musical. <laughs> Answer the sound of music. Mm. So yeah, people like to poo-poo that, it's not as a real musical. No, but I'm they're singing, saying. they're dancing. It's right. a musical. But Blues Brothers 2000, not so much. No, <laughs> the songs no. were good. Yeah, the, the <laughs> movie's terrible. Yeah, but I find myself just like listening to you know the soundtrack is probably you know <laughs> oh. amazing. I like the songs in it, That's but cool. no, that did not. <laughs> they, they did not, no, serve no Well, you were spared. Though. Yeah. CJ, are you a musical guy? I am. Like, yeah. I did musicals in high school and stuff like that. Oh, cool. I, like, used to do plays and things. So <laughs> it was interesting seeing this one. Like, for me, like, the best kind of musicals are continuing the story as you sing the song. Like, the mm -hmm. song isn't something to take away or take a break or something separate. Like, it's meant to, like, add more to the characters, which there are a few songs that do this year, and there are a few that I feel like just kind of stop the action and just, I don't really know why they're there other than just, <laughs> they wanted to try something like just a musical thing to put in or yeah. fill time. Like I felt like there were a lot of moments where they all had these conversations to bring up things about their lives and then they act and have to like react to it. And then by the end, there isn't really a resolution. It's like, they're trying to say the characters are changed, but I'm yeah. like, I thought there was gonna be a lot more to it. Like I thought yeah. I was waiting for more musical numbers to show okay, how do the characters end up? And I feel like that felt very rushed. Right. But they were, they it were all was brought, a very rushed movie. It they was very short. It yeah. was like just over an hour? It was an hour and like less than an hour and a half, I think. Yeah, like I think it was like, like an hour and 20, 20 minutes. Something. Something. I was going to say 17. Yeah. They were all brought together in that Barely one hour. feature length. Okay, yeah. yeah, it was short. But then they kind of disperse and go about their own lives. And but at least they didn't all randomly find each other again for a last big music number. That would make <laughs> less sense. In the streets, like dancing. Yes, yeah. if like all the construction workers met all the <laughs> people from the hospital and they just broke into one random number. That would have destroyed like the, the end. Like the end of uh, the Jersey Boys movie. Right. Which I, I kind of like that movie. Eastwood directed Yeah, that, Eastwood, yeah. you know. Um, good cast, but... All right. Well, if you if it ever comes your way, stuck, j give it a, a yeah. watch, and I'll watch Subway Stories. Or is it New York Stories? Subway Stories. Subway New York Stories, Stories was a different movie. Oh, different yeah. movie. I'll watch both okay, anyway. Yeah. Whatever. All right, guys. So the main event of today, uh, tonight rather, Hellboy. This is the third film. That's actually a reboot. Unrelated. No, it's it's a unrelated. Reboot. Yeah. It's right. not a third. It's a reboot yes. of uh, Mike Mignola's graphic novel um, about a creature from hell who I think one of you can <laughs> describe it better than I can. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> You're the expert. Yeah, no, he's yeah. the expert. With all of his toys. Look at yeah. this. Well, not, yeah, I brought in now, the yeah. Funko oh. Pops I have for it. I'm yeah. a fan from the comics. It's about a demon who's summoned to Earth, meant to destroy the world. Yeah. But instead, he's raised by people and is uh, becomes a champion for the people and saves them and fights monsters. Yeah. Uh, it's a man who wants to become a hero, even though everyone tells him he's meant to be a monster and destroy. Right, right. So usually there's a good... Uh, morality play on there where it's like evil tries to tempt him into fulfilling his destiny they tell him and he keeps telling destiny to go fuck itself pretty much so he's an anti-hero he yeah. is like yeah. he's not 
like a squeaky clean traditional hero. Like he drinks, he smokes, he shoots yeah. everything. Right, right. But it's like when you're a demon who files down his horn so you can try and look more normal. It's like you're running around just punching monsters. That's all you do. With it's a, a gigantic time. like gauntlet. Yeah, hand. just a big stone red hand. Yeah, and but, a badass gun too. Yeah. And guys at home, you can check out the uh, the cast <laughs> of the they're first. They're hanging with Batman and Robin. Yeah, though. yeah, they're hanging yeah. out. That, that's Dark a crossover. Horse DC. They did that crossover, actually. They, they did. did. Oh, that Batman sounds cool. And Hellboy? Yep. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. It's got to be better than the movie. Yeah. I well, I mean, oh, <laughs> it wasn't that. It was pretty bad. No, it this was. was. It this wasn't was uh, you'll what have, we hoped for. It was a hell of a bad time. Okay? That was, <laughs> Your yeah. opinion, not mine. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed the first movie. I do. I, From Guillermo 04. Del Toro's yeah. original movie. Yeah. Del Toro, fantastic. you got Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman was a fantastic Hellboy. Yeah. Perfectly cast. Though I think David Harbour was pretty good in this, too. It was very I limited. David Harbour was I did okay. a good job yeah. doing an impression of the mm. Hellboy we got to know and love. Okay. I believe he tried his best to live up to yeah. the expectation. Okay. And in many aspects... He did he, kind of sound and, he and did, feel yeah, like... Yeah, so that's what uh, I was to say. In many aspects, he sounded like he it. He did, he did. They tried to make it look there the same. There wasn't yeah. enough but interpersonal it relationships yes, with him and the father, with him and the witch, with him and the girl. I thought she was Sasha Lane. Give a shout mm. out to her. Uh, I she thought was my least she was a bolt of energy in an otherwise yeah, lifeless movie. I, I liked movie. her performance best. Yes, and Daniel Day Kim. I also yes. was very impressed was with really him. Uh, but in limited supporting roles, limited screen time, I liked their yeah. parts. Yeah. But this Hellboy, he was given so little to do. This was just moving from one action set piece yeah. to another action set piece to another action well, set piece. Well, unfortunately, there was no I think cohesion. That's no cohesion yeah. and I think boring the plot exposition didn't put it all together. Yeah. But I think the problem is that they had to make it fast enough for a different time period. We're talking how many years? It's 15 ago? years. Exactly. Yeah. When, when comic book movies were just getting started, in people true. have less True. of an attention span in some ways. Well, so that's maybe really they sad. Then maybe that's they. Really felt yeah. they had to fill more This is a movie for kids, also, really. It was a budget It's thing. one of the most graphic, violent movies <laughs> yeah. of the years. You're saying it's for kids? I, I disagree. So. It's, oh, for, it's for that genre. It's for teenage boys yes. that can sneak into an R-rated movie without their parents out like so they could see blood. This is a movie for millennials. Let's just... It's, yes. it, it's not for anybody. This is a movie <laughs> for... I, I wouldn't even give... I wouldn't recommend job. it to anyone. No. Yeah. Here's the I thing. I enjoyed this movie. Like, it's dumb and fun. Like, it's not as good as I hoped it was going to be. It's definitely not a story-based movie. This is... You see a play on TV where you just sit down and watch dumb. the action. Yeah. Oh boy, we, we proved <laughs> Oh, it can be good. Oh boy, it's it supposed can. to be, you know, dark. Like, here's there the thing. No I don't know if there's going to be any sequels with. to this yeah. one, but I hope they'll be able to, like, Guillermo del Toro come back or they're going to do another movie to do things. Like, I, I don't know if del Toro. I don't think del Toro's. He's an Oscar winner now. He'll be, I don't think he's he'll gonna produce. He's still a big help. Yeah, so. yeah, but. Um, what, uh, what, what hurt this movie the most and what helped the Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy, it's not just because Guillermo's a better director or Ron Perlman's a better actor. Mm. The, the, we were on this journey with the human character who goes into this, you know, secret, you know, agency, yes. government mm. agency that, you know, investigates and works with the supernatural. And he, we didn't have that human character to go on the journey with. There was no journey. It was just action, violence, right. and I was gory say, violence. About yeah. what you said, yeah. it wasn't just that we didn't have a human to go with the journey. We didn't have other people in the agency to Correct. relate to. No, no one. We didn't yeah, have no anyone human, in. No regular that human character. That was one regret I had yeah. with the movie. They mm -hmm. didn't have even another monster type creature that they that the society has said you're a monster. Yeah. The other one tried. had the fish man. Yes. Yeah. Which we are hopefully <laughs> going to meet. Uh, David Hyde Pierce. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we could have had I more like of the, the lobster cool. We could have had yeah, all the lobster. Yeah. Hayden Church was we good in his very him. limited role. Lobster yeah. Johnson. I didn't expect they were going to do him, and I loved it. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the like, things I love about the comics is that it's made in a very pulpy style. It's a very gothic horror mm -hmm. one that's an action comic. And they have such weird characters. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> Guillermo del Toro, for like all of his great creature designs, like mm -hmm. really kind of softened a lot of those edges. Like Hellboy was mostly right, but like Ape Sapien was kind of toned down in that mm -hmm. movie. Even some of the monsters were a little toned down. This yeah. one, they had like giant pig man Gruagat with metal hands. I called him Man Bear Pig. Yeah, they, okay. they, only said it, yeah, they only said his name once, which I thought was so weird. And he was such and a was major like character. The movie. Some of the yeah. monsters looked cool. I thought Hellboy yeah. looked good. I thought the ageless Mila Jovovich and her, the yeah, red cape, the, the special effects around her were good. I thought also but the I hated witch. the giants. You hated the giants? They were... 
I think CGI they was they really bad. I wanted to, they made me want to go home and take a bath. They well, were they were so dirty and disgusting. They were only but I enjoyed that action scene. And that was disgusting. <laughs> well, listen, you got an That was on scene. my TV. I'd have been spraying my TV. I and thought the character down. design was great with <laughs> the listen, giants. Listen, you got an action scene of three giants batting Hellboy around and killing yeah. people. And, and I'm like, awful. that was so much fun to watch. It, oh, it was really bad, but it had fun energy. And it's like, I wish it had been shot better, but I was able to enjoy some of these scenes. I did. I wish I I wish I could have shut my brain off a little. I shut it off a little. I didn't shut it off all the way enough. About the giants and a little more of a build up too. It was messy. I didn't want to see them on the screen. They were so ugly. Oh yeah, we remember the giants are there. The giants could have either built up a little more or could have just been left out. But I do think the movie was worth seeing. I think the movie. It's fun to see. Like if you like bloody action movies with a big big plot, you'll enjoy it. Like. And I also Obviously, thought it was a nice break yeah. from all the other superhero movies that are building. It's worse than the top. other superhero yeah. movies. But <laughs> it's just, I don't and I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not a big superhero fan, but this was, but I'd was rather like, see a Marvel clone. I, I guess don't it was count, different. Than, I don't consider this a superhero. But it followed the Marvel formula. It mm. did what, I guess, good or bad, it didn't take itself too seriously. Yes. It was lighthearted. It was pulpy. Exactly. The other the the Marvel movies been are the same way, too. Yeah. yeah, but it just, it, was, it wasn't fun. I think I'd rather see Batman versus Superman than this. No. That no, had an edge. That was a, that was a bad that, movie. That, that was had a bad edge. movie. To me, that, that movie was edge. irredeemable. Like there was um, nothing good. Here's what's redeemable out of it. It was Zack Snyder's vision. All these other movies are cookie cutter, focus mm -hmm. group, following the, the same form. Zack Snyder's, Zach Snyder's went vision, to the edge, he but it was a bad off. vision. Yeah. It was a horrible vision. It was, it was an was irrational horrible. vision. Yeah. How, that way they give Batman a gun, and they make Superman a And they make Superman kill. a terrorist. Yes. I mean, it was crazy. And it but, flowed better than Hellboy. It really did. Uh, yeah. It starts yeah. better. Like There was a better screenwriter in the first half. Like Hellboy, I wish it, it had, had a better screenwriter. Hellboy didn't have anything to say. Hellboy had a lot of fun. You want to see blood and guts, and a lot of scenes. CGI blood. This is, you're saying this is for people to have fun. I'm saying this is maybe for 15-year-old boys that are, want to sneak into an R-rated movie just to see some but blood and guts thrown at them. But someone who finds blood and guts to be unfortunate in pus and mucus and sewing the bodies back together gross, mm. I still enjoyed it even with the parts I had to cover my eyes for. Okay. Yikes. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I this mean, movie, some like, were good, I wish, was, yeah. I almost wish they had been able to do a better movie, like overall, like been able to put more of a budget into it or more time. Well, the care. budget was there. But the effects were there. Yeah. I mean, there was just no there. script. There was no script. No, the no, directors weren't given a chance to do much. And, and it's, it's really unfortunate. from a good director. Neil Marshall yeah. made The Descent. He directed mm -hmm. the Game of Thrones episode Black Water. He's a good mm -hmm. director. He He's can a really do good horror. He can do thing. action. And this was a bad movie. Also, yeah. like, the source material, like, this is one of my favorite arcs from Hellboy, because this is, like, almost the e the very end of Hellboy's story. Like, mm -hmm. in the comics, like, this is what it was all leading up to. Like, all these oh. characters, Baba Yaga, so they started Ruigash, at the, end. the Blood yeah. Queen, is, like, not planning they were all introduced. Well, no, they are because over, they like, left it. It won't happen. Yeah. I don't it was over like 15, 20 we'll years of the things. comics that you see these characters pop up, and then mm -hmm. this is like the big fight that puts them all together. Mm -hmm. But they had to do a different ending because they were treating this like a reboot. And unfortunately, it rehashes a lot of what the first Guillermo del Toro movie did. Yeah. But yes, that movie did. did it better, and that's much, what's really much better. Yeah. Yeah. This like, wasn't as good as the one, first one. This one, I knew they couldn't do the ending, and that's what's really unfortunate. And like, the ending falls a little flat. The original Guillermo del Toro, I believe, is available streaming on Netflix, so just stay home and watch that. And he did okay. the second one, right? And he did the second one, which I didn't like as much, but Not still. The second one wasn't as good. Like it was said, far more beautiful. Good looking, yeah. Yes, it's a very, it's very good beautiful to look yeah, at. All of Guillermo del Toro's movies are beautiful and ugly at the same time. Plus, Danny Elfman scored the second one so I yes. did not know that. big okay. Danny Elfman buff yes, yes. people know <laughs> so guys but I mean uh, yeah I was just gonna say one last oh, no, no, so I think you guys love the female but I didn't think she brought enough to it I miss Selma Blair Sasha. I thought oh. yeah, Sasha she was no Summer Selma Blair. Really? Yeah. I thought she was. Summer Blair. This movie was so lifeless that all of a sudden she came up. I didn't she was care the only about Selma her. Human I kind of did. I, I thought she felt, had enough I to felt carry like I the movie. Yeah. Wanted to see her. I, I would have wanted to see a flashback of her as a kid. Or yeah, maybe they did. They showed her as a baby. But like, they yeah, definitely the should have established who she was a lot earlier. Because yeah, as it was exactly. in theaters, it's like see her show up. She came out of nowhere. When they start saying the rhyme, I'm like, oh, that's Alice from the comics. Because even from watching the trailer, I didn't know that. And literally, my dad and my brother, like, we have no idea who this is. And I'm like. I have to explain to you how this goes in, and then halfway yeah, through the no, movie, the, this they explain who she is. This movie could have come with clip yes. notes, and it <laughs> it's, made that It's sense. definitely, yeah. I think it was shot in separate parts, and then kind of put together, yeah. and it unfortunately mm. shows. Yeah. Like, yeah. I like wish there had been a yeah. better yeah, story it, it overall well, to it. No. The story uh, wasn't good. I still say it's worth seeing. Like, it's not the best movie, but it's like, I had fun watching it, my family had fun. 
it's something to watch with your friends and be like, okay, there's a food call moments, and then you talk about the stuff that was cheesy. Wait for it to come on Netflix. I w don't pay right. to see this when movie. When it comes to cable, so I So then you say shouldn't pay. recommend it, because in the end, I'm not recommending it. Yeah, the, the, I yeah. recommend yeah. it. Like, I see, so you don't it, recommend it, but I just don't should see it. I, here's the no, thing. See, I, I wish nothing we else a better Hellboy movie. You just wish they made a better Hellboy movie, though, then they shouldn't see this movie, because it's not a... See the first two. Think about seeing this one, but don't commit. <laughs> skip this it. one's not bad. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. Like, My message. They have the choice skip of a it. sequel or doing another one. I'd say do a different one. Yeah. Okay. So another reboot. Yeah. Okay. There no, we go. I hate reboots. Just fix this one. Prove that a second. I, movie I also noticed that this one had the same logo, the same font as yes. the original. Yeah, because that's from the, the comics. Oh, that's that's from there. So it was a little, a little confusing there, but yeah. I, I, yeah. this was no, just a I was not a fan. I was I was disappointed. Yeah. It was not fun and yeah. just bloody, bloody. If you want to see blood and gore, yeah. go see this. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> you're really not going to get too much yeah. out of it. It's yeah. a letdown. Yeah, see something else. We got some great uh, superhero movies coming up in the next f few months. We've got Avengers. So yeah, guys, wait for that one instead. All and three we'll hours of Avengers. I know. And we'll find they're... out which Stark is going to die. <laughs> oh, that's in a couple hours. Yeah. You so. think there's going to be an intermission? In for Avengers? No, no. they don't do it. Why don't they do that anymore? They because do. they warned everyone you better go to the bathroom beforehand. But yeah, you I've have to only go in the middle of it. One too. movie in the theater that had an intermission. It was the traveling road show of the night it came out, The Hateful Eight. Oh really? They had an oh, intermission. Yeah, they long. had an intro, uh, interlude. You know, music. Okay, like, well, yeah. it's built into the Old movie. School. It's part of the gimmick. That yeah, no, that was fun. I thought yeah. that was. Yeah, they I did the same thing with like. Grindhouse, when they did the Death Proof. Yes. Uh, Grindhouse had trailers in between. It did have yeah. the trailers, but it did say like an intermission, which oh, it is okay. weird that America doesn't do that anymore because almost every other country out there, like they still kind of do they still have intermissions. Yeah. It's okay. really American movies that say, yeah. like, well, do we they want have you to sit there. Features, oh. We don't have double features anymore. Anymore. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say. So, yeah. <laughs> well, well, because because Grindhouse was an actual money. double feature, and that was an interesting I enjoyed that. I was really hoping they would do another one. Well, it flopped, even and now just, I learned I the true that, story why it flopped oh, because yeah, of Harvey Weinstein. Oh, yeah, Harvey yeah. Weinstein fucking murdered that movie. <laughs> he he, he and Robert scene. Rodriguez yeah. and Rose yeah. McGowan and that yeah. whole well, situation. Mess, that was yeah. It was an entire he thing. He tried to screw uh, Robert Rodriguez. I love how you succeeded. do that with your hand while... He tried <laughs> to screw, <laughs> give him the old fork in the eye, okay? Yeah. yeah, it did not go well, unfortunately, but I still hope they do another one. Like, if they have just different directors who are like, Make two movies, put them together, because that was always a fun thing. That for me, was, was a fun. That was fun. Yeah. That the, was a fun. The first, I think the the last um, one of the most memorable double features I did was uh, it was uh, Angels in the Outfield followed by The Lion King. I was nine years old. They were both on the same day. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Right. It was a one fun good Saturday. movie, one bad movie. I like Angels in the Outfield. Yeah. <laughs> How many Oscar winners are in that now? Oh, uh, what do we? Woo. <laughs> Matthew <laughs> McConaughey. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Adrian, Adrian Brody. Brody. <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Levitt was in it. He doesn't yeah. have an Oscar Did yet. Danny Glover. Was Danny it Glover was nominated. nominated. He doesn't have an Oscar. I don't Probably know. nominated for The Color Purple. I don't think so. Great movie. I think he's been yes, nominated it is. once. I don't think he has actually. I okay. think he's a very good actor. Yeah, yeah he's very, a great actor, and yeah. I don't think he'll um, win though because he doesn't hang out with the right people. It's yeah. all networking. Well, you know what, guys? Let's let's um, put a bookmark in this Oscar discussion because <laughs> we're going to take a, a short commercial break from our commercial sponsor followed by an interview I did the other day with uh, filmmaker Madeline Olneck, who just did the new dramedy uh, Wild Nights with Emily, which basically tells the private side, the private life of Emily Dickinson and her sordid lesbian affairs. So here uh, is a commercial followed by the interview. Stay tuned. Under the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call 
Randy. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? Good. Good, good. Thank you for taking the time today. So, oh, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to be able to talk about the movie, so thank you. Oh, sure. It's really good. I saw last night. Very enjoyable. Um, a different side awesome. to Emily Dickinson. So I'm curious, how did the project originally come about? Well, you noticed the reference to the New York Times article in the end credit. And that was the I, I read that and I was so shocked because just like you just said, a different side, Emily Dickinson, mm -hmm. I have right. never heard anything like that about Emily Dickinson, and I'm always really up on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I consider myself to like, you know, especially literary stuff, I'm always up on. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really, really shocked. And what was interesting about that article was they talked about the spectrographic technologies, you know, right. you know to restore these erasures of students' names. But then they were like, and here's this other letter, which wasn't erased at all. And they quoted this small letter, mm. and it was so obvious, and it was so passionate. Mm. I just said, are you kidding? That letter is just sitting out on, on a race, on, you know, <laughs> for anyone to read. And no one has talked about this before, I was really shocked. What was the research process like for the film? The first book I started with was uh, Richard Sewell's The Life of Emily Dickinson, which was the winner of the National Book Award. Mm. And it was a really funny book, unintentionally, because mm. the book was actually created because the daughter, Mabel Todd, Mabel Todd, who's the mistress of Austin, Austin mm -hmm. and Emily's brother in the film, her mm -hmm. daughter you know when you saw the film, you know how there's that chunk of papers that Virginia <laughs> discovers? Her daughter had that in chunk of papers in her possession. Mm. Because, and I don't know if they gave you a historical packet or not. The reason why I made that packet was because I wanted people to, un a lot of, one of the big questions that people have is, why didn't I know the story? Like, how could this be true if we hadn't heard anything like this before at all? Sort of a mystery. It, it is, but it's wound up in a bunch of very practical reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and some of them had to do with rights issues and papers. So in the movie, when you, and I know this wasn't your question, I should mm -hmm. just stay on point, but I do feel like it's fine. But the point is, is that there was a lawsuit where the Dickinson sued Mabel, uh, this was after Emily was, had passed away and after Austin had passed away. He was sold for that piece of land that Susan and Emily are talking about in the movie where Susan's mm -hmm. talking about land being given as she go to her children. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. There was a lawsuit. Mabel was very, Mabel lost. Mm -hmm. She was very bitter, and she refused to give back that chunk of paper. Um, okay. And she gave it to her daughter. And then her daughter, and it included some poems and things that hadn't even ever been published. Okay. Um, and her daughter took it. To took it to Richard Sewell, who was that scholar at Yale, and in exchange for him writing this book that told the story of Emily Dickinson as it included the story of her mother, he got mm -hmm. exchange, he got access to those papers, which was okay. like a gold mine, as you can imagine. Right, you right. Were a Dickinson scholar, and you were being given the trunk, what that was like. <laughs> right. And she even made him her literary executor. So he wrote this book, but Maple did really just like Susan. And Susan gets a hatchet job in that book and it seems this falsehood that Emily and Susan had a girlhood falling out and didn't see each other or talk to each other and Emily and Emily hated Susan right. and Mabel was Emily's favorite. Okay. Like even though Mabel and Emily never saw each other. Right. Ever. I'm curious about the, the casting choices. How how did Molly Shannon get involved with the project? Well, I always knew I wanted it to be Molly because that image that people have of Emily Dickinson is so wrong. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if Molly played Emily Dickinson, people would finally understand who she was. So you think she had a strong connection to Emily Dickinson originally? You 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 saw something in in Molly that made you think this is Emily Dickinson. Yes, yeah, personal. Per, she has a warmth. She has an original mind. Mm -hmm. You know, she's different. She yeah. has, you know, she conceives of things in an unusual manner. She's one of a kind. All of those same qualities that Emily Dickinson had, the real Emily Dickinson, not the one we've been fed who is just morbid, so right, right. that was important to me because right away when she 
for your Molly Shannon playing Emily Dickinson, they immediately have to reframe how they see her. <laughs> right. It's refreshing to see Molly in a, in a role like this. You know, it's not a flat-out comedy. I mean, it's got elements of comedy, but it really is a drama. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think I called it dramedy. Yeah. We're, we're calling it a dramatic comedy. Dramatic comedy, okay. Yeah, that we're coining that because I don't like the word dramedy. I don't know why. I just hate it. But then hmm. it's a dramatic comedy because hmm. it's so it people part seriousness and humor. Right. Um, it's a good balance. I'm curious. What was the um, what was it like assembling the rest of the cast? What was that process like? Well, I have some actors that I've worked with a lot um, who are my gang. I love them. I've worked with them on several feature films. Susan Siegler, who plays Susan Dickinson, who's just wonderful. Jackie Monahan, who plays Lavinia Dickinson, who's hilarious. Kevin Steele, who was in my plays. I used to be a playwright who was in many plays, productions of mine in New York. Okay. Um, he plays Austin Dickinson. And so a lot of it was going with people I had worked, you know, who I have a artistic collaboration with, longstanding. Um, and then Amy, I had always wanted to work with Amy Steinmetz, who... Mm. Um, plays Mabel Shaw, the mistress, and it's been a chemistry. Okay. So, it's been, it's, it's very, you know, that movie, is, it's funny that both of these movies are coming out right now. <laughs> so. mm. Now, I'm curious, uh, can you talk a little bit about the spectrographic technology that you used uh, for the film? Well, no, the article, that's what I read about in the article. Oh, okay. The article was called, so the article was called Beethoven's Mirror Tells All. And it was just about how advances in science allow us to understand new things about historical figures. Right. And the article did profile Martin Nell Smith, who is the Dickinson expert who the movie is dedicated to, who we worked with during the movie. And also, she created emilydickinson.org, which okay. is now the only reason you can see all of Emily Dickinson's letters online. So I felt like... But the the interesting thing, one of the ways we like to refer to to the story is hiding in plain sight mm. because that article came out in 1998. Um, mm. Martha Nell and Ellen Louise Hart published um, Emily Dickinson's intimate uh, correspondence with Susan Huntington Dickinson in 1998. These and the letters in the archives are accessible by anyone who have read these letters. But that other image of Emily Dickinson was so extreme that people couldn't shake it. So that, and that's a little bit of what was interesting to me. I was like, what is the investment in that image of her? Why are people so invested? How did it come to Right. How far back does this fascination with Emily Dickinson go back? Is this, has this been a, um, a dream of yours to make this type of movie? For me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did a play version in 1999. Mm. Um, so I first told this story in 1990, which is a long time, but the interest in Emily Dickinson herself, I, like everyone else, found that image of Emily Dickinson creepy, and mm. I actually didn't even want to read the poem. Part of my interest in this was that image of Emily Dickinson yeah. that was so creepy, creepy made me right. not want to read her poem. And then when I found out who she really was, I felt it's really wrong that people don't understand this because her work is so wonderful and it expresses joy and passion and different emotions and it's so modern too. What do you um, What do you hope audiences take away from the film? I hope that they will. One of the biggest compliments we get is where because part of what we try to do in the movie is have you not just hear the poems but experience them. Mm-hmm. So we created a movie where the poems are on screen and you have these experiences with the poems. And when people leave and say, I never wanted to read Emily Dickinson's poem, and now I want to go home and read every one that I can <laughs> find, that's a huge compliment. For uh, young young people to be inspired by how Emily Dickinson persevered, you know, in the face of people rejecting her work and not understanding it. Like mm-hmm. she is a, a role model in that way. Absolutely. Uh, last question. Um, do you plan to uh, shed light on any other notable figures from history? I do, but I'm not going to tell you who it's been. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. All right. So, Madeline, uh, tell everyone uh, how can they see the film. Uh, they can go to wildnightswithemily.com to look at the latest news 
for where the movie's playing. Well, Madeline, uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. The film is great, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Randy. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to Unger the Radar. I'm your host, Randy Unger, and we're back. Um, that was a lovely interview I did with Madeline Olnick. She's a very nice person, very uh, very good filmmaker, too. So if you guys have a chance, uh, Wild Nights with Emily. I know you're a history buff, so yeah, I would check that out. <laughs> so guys, I'm curious, um, CJ, what are you looking forward to? What's, what's oh, coming out? Why did you come to this end of the couch first? Oh, do you um, want me to reverse? Yeah. I'll <laughs> yeah. All right. Ladies well, so, first? Ladies first, sure. Okay. Right. I'm excited. Game of Thrones finally returning tonight. Okay. I'm, most everything I'm watching, though, is on its final season. Two more episodes of Gotham. Arrow, I'm waiting to see how they actually end it since they're taking the show off, since the show can't make up if it's a prequel present day huh. or if it's a futuristic show. It has its moments. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing how X-Men will end because now that it's been sold and it's owned by Disney, I assume they're going to... Yeah. They're going to fire everyone, like they fired all the people who were working for them, all the people who lost their jobs. So I don't think the movie's going to go with a, with a bang, but I yeah. am hoping. I think it'll something. be. It might be number one. I end up liking the X Men movies, I despite like, all their flaws. I end up. You I know, like half yeah. of them. Mm. The only one, uh, a couple of the Wolverine solo movies weren't good. Logan's almost, Logan was amazing. It's almost a masterpiece. Logan yeah. was, it was like a Western, you yeah. know, it was like show Logan, the war. Wolverine you know. I had hope for, but it's like it never went far enough. Like, mm -hmm. it was still like too tame for what it should have been, but better than X-Men Origins. Yeah. Like, that, that was, yeah. and I like that, that too, to a point. I liked X-Men yeah. Origins Looking in some aspects, it, it but I know that bad. it failed in so many key things Are, it was supposed to introduce. Is that the one with Ryan Reynolds? Yes. That was so bad. It was so pathetic. It was laughable. Yeah, yeah, it was laughable. And Logan, that was rated uh, R, R, I think. Yes. It was a hard R, and it was excellent. Yeah, yeah. It was, but most, because but, it told the story. Yeah. Right. But most of the X-Men movies are PG-13, right? Correct. Well, most I think movies they all in general. are. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Most yeah. movies in general, all the comic book movies. Because of course right. they don't make any yeah. money because they Correct. can't let the kids. Because PG's now too lame. They don't <laughs> right. want to be labeled PG. That's for kids. <laughs> or G. And R, or G. And R is they're going to lose out on, you know, all the teenagers' money, so they want PG-13's the good safe yeah. you know, rating that every movie seems to want to I get. think the most brilliant um, stroke of a filmmaker or any business sense is uh, Steven Spielberg's institution. Uh, implementation of the PG-13 rating. And that was because yeah. of, do you know what movie? Gremlins 2. Oh, I thought it was because no, it was, of... Uh, it was the first Gremlins. Yeah, it was the first Gremlins, Gremlins and, and uh, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah, and they were both Temple of Doom. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That was the one. Well, that was yeah. 1984, and Spielberg 84. was involved with both of those. And what and was the first PG-13 rated movie? Ooh. That's a great question. I think you asked me this in the past. I, okay, we did discuss <laughs> this. It's actually, it's a pretty good movie. It's and trivia. It, yeah, it's trivia. Red Dawn. Oh, John Milius. I didn't know sense. that yeah. movie. That was the first Swayze, yeah. huh? Cold War thriller. Who's yeah. Cold Patrick Swayze, uh, Jennifer Grey. I love that movie. Yes, I know that movie. It's so okay. ridiculous, but I love <laughs> it. It's, it's, it's like, it's really, and the opening shot with the Russian soldiers coming yeah. down and shooting the school, it's like, wow. That yeah, was, that movie They shot the so teacher fast. right away, yeah. yeah. So basically, then, it's the Goonies in like. It's, no. a, hard, it's, yeah. it's a lot harder than yeah, the Goonies. Yeah. It is. The it's, Goonies with guns. Oliver Stone directs the Goonies, maybe, okay? Yeah, like that one is a better way to describe it. Yeah, but it's more of a. The characters are really well done, the acting's great, and it's like. Ultra conservative, though. Ultra anti. Oliver's because Oliver's oh. super liberal. This yeah. is very, you know, it's Red Dawn. This okay? is full. Yeah. We're gonna go like we're gonna as go hard as we can to have our own yeah. guns and yeah. shoot yeah. Soviets. Like and it we're was have kids kill the Soviets. Yeah, the most yeah. ultra American movie you could oh, get. Yeah. But it's like I still enjoy it. The okay. remake was awful. I didn't see the that remake. came out a couple no. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. The remake was bad remake. because it tried to do the same thing where it's like. Was now it it's, North it's North Korea takes over. Because first it was China. And then they realized, oh, we want China's money. Let's make it North Korea. So they actually the edited enemy. all of the yeah. flags. Are you serious? To make they it North Korea. They did that in post They did that in post production. Uh, they uh, made it North Korea. That's funny. Where they have some kind of an EMP thing to shut down all electronics. And thus they were able to take over America. Even though North Korea physically would not have the number of soldiers needed to occupy America. In any significant was way. Was it just a town? Because in the original, no, it's yes. like half the country. Like what? they're trying to say, like oh, North boy. Korea is like taking over America. Like they're trying to do the same thing. See, China would have the capabilities. To exactly, do that, which is why that's okay. That's come why up. that didn't work. So okay. as they take over the town, it's like college student Chris Hemsworth, who's like a former Marine. It's who, not college is it student. It, uh, is it? Chris? Uh, it's one of the Hemsworths, I, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hemsworth. Liam. It might be Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth. It's one of those. Like. 
and it's just them and other kids who like you do not buy as college as like high school kids at all. Where they're saying like <laughs> we have guns. Movies? They're like yeah. thirty. We have guns. When's the last time you saw Greece. <laughs> Here's my favorite part though is Good that point. they have guns Nine and they're like oh. we're gonna <laughs> shoot them up, and they say as a soldier like we're gonna do what the Taliban did. And they do what the Taliban does and do terrorist attacks on the North Koreans occupying them. And they are heroes for that. Hmm. Yet, if this movie was about people fighting off opposing forces in the Middle East, then uh, that would be America mm, as the bad guys, yeah. which wouldn't work at all. I'm like, that's so tone deaf. You know, I told, it doesn't make any I sense. I just thought of a great movie from the 80s. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. Uh, War Games? Yes. You know, I've never actually I prefer, seen War Games. I prefer, yeah. though, the one from the 90s that was made on the exact same concept. Okay. What's that? Oh. One? Wait, let me think of what it's called. Okay. Get back to me on that. I can't believe okay. I don't remember. I but, rewatched it only a year ago. My friend was watching War Games, and I said, Oh, have you ever seen this? And now I don't remember. It's from the 90s? Okay. Yes. We'll get it back has, to you. Um, okay. Captain Picard. It, oh, Masterminds? Oh, yes, that was thank a, you. video game, that was a bad movie. Yeah. Masterminds, saying, Vincent MacArthur, so, Patrick Stewart. It's so like, bad, it's oh, funny. Oh, that was a, I remember seeing that <laughs> yeah, on HBO one night. That was bad, yeah, Masterminds. But, Jason, what are you uh, looking forward um, to? The new Godzilla. Nice. I'm looking nice. That looks if, really if you good. See the, the, well, one so good thing happy. about seeing the new Hellboy, if you see it in yes. IMAX, you get this awesome, long, extended Godzilla Yeah, you trailer. got like a five-minute yeah, trailer. And with King Ghidorah, and it looks impressive. Oh, I'm so happy. That Isn't Gamora, what's her name? I'm so happy. Mothra. Rodan and Mothra so they've yes. got all the monsters. I they're pulling like, out all the stuff. I think yeah. there's going to be more monsters, but they're hiding it. And I'm very happy I'm for me that. Too. Yeah, I'm, you're, you're like, I'm really know impressed. What's yeah. Coming. There's nothing yeah, like they've shown enough to get us in there, and they great have trailers. stuff nice. hidden. Yeah. Like, but there's nothing worse than when the trailer is better than the movie. And that happens yeah. often. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. What happened with the last Godzilla? Yeah. Most trailers were incredible, and why I stay away from trailers as much as I can. Trailers get me hyped up. I enjoy trailers. Even though I just posted this on Facebook, the Lion King trailer. See that I'm not that impressed with. The new Star Wars trailer looks very impressive. I was not impressed by that. Whoa! Yeah. That I'm like, yeah. I it could go either way because it's J.J. Abrams back, and it's like I enjoyed Episode Seven, but story wise, it barely resolved anything, and all it did was try to raise story questions mm -hmm. with no way to answer them. Yeah. Like I realized, like as a director following up with Episode Eight and like all the Hayden stuff that happened, it's like. I realize a lot of the stuff J.J. Abrams set up, there's almost no way you can ever address them that would satisfy um, Like It kept people interested for two years, but it's like there's very hard ways to try and satisfy I'm excited. I end up liking most of the Star Wars movies, yeah, like so I, I would, enjoy most I, I'm, I'm looking forward to I'm it. I like it. So, I'm Whatever really looking love. forward to the new Tarantino movie. That's a new oh, one. Yes. So yeah. Once upon a time in Kyle. Margot Robbie. Hopefully this yeah. will be her next best movie since Wolf <laughs> yep. of Wall Street. We'll yeah. see. We'll see. So. All right, guys, so a few more minutes. Uh, plugs, anything going on? Anything you want to mention, Jason? You can check out all my reviews at uh, www.panandslam.com. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter, uh, Jason K. Critic. And uh, yeah, you can check all my reviews, my audio features, my articles there, uh, panandslam.com. Nice. Panins, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's catchy. Pan and scan, yeah, catchy. Oh, yes, and, and cheers, Vernell. <laughs> All right, for now. <laughs> he asked me to do to give him a shout out. For so now. there you go. He gets All right. it. All right, <laughs> cool. Erica, anything you want? Oh, nothing to plug right now. Okay. Always interested in new cinematography work, videography. Anyone want to hit me up? Email me or look for me on Facebook. Cool. CJ, anything going on? Yeah, I need to get a website. Like you had a whole <laughs> spiel there that was yes. great. It's like I need to get a website and like actually sit down and review movies more, like more in depth stuff. Like you know your the stuff. New, yeah, oh, the yeah. new yeah. Pet Cemetery. Like I want to write a movie well, that's something talking we about were that talking because about before because that was yeah. such a disappointment. It the was. ending had me shout out Please. in the theater. Why would they do that? Yeah, uh, skip that movie. Skip like, if you Pet can set it on TV for read free, it's worth it. Skip it's like, the original too. Yeah. I enjoy but the I've original more the because original. it's cheesy. The original and bad. is the original so is bad, it's good. Yeah. All right. I would give the original credit. The original for that, is but. cheesy, but it's very earnest. Uh, the new movie treats death <coughs> like it's something that only exists in movies and not a real thing. That's good. The original was faithful to the book. It was just bad. Yeah. It was oh just, yeah, no, yeah, it was a cheesy bad movie. Cheesy, but yeah. when you watch it, like I rewatch it with my brother, and it's like we had so much fun. Like we were making jokes the whole time. I guess I need to watch it again yeah. with a yeah. group of people and have fun. Yeah. With Make it, it a drinking game. It's not one to Maybe, watch by yourself. Yeah. It's like every it's time Fred Gwynn says the same thing. Make it tolerable take with some take alcohol. A shot. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, there's a lot of stuff you could do with when a drink. When he goes, no. Oh, oh, that's bad. That was horrible. But it's better than what they did in the new one. Sadly, it's more yes. memorable. Mm -hmm. So I oh, you give it credit for that. It's a bad movie, but it's memorable. I'm gonna watch both, and I'll, I'll get back yeah. to both. That's my plug. Read the book. Don't see the new Pet Cemetery movie. That's my agreed. Good plug. Good. And speaking of more plugs, um, some Magnitude, uh, our sponsor, Magnitude Jewelry, 
Here are some plugs. We've got some upcoming events. April 28th, the Awaken Fair in Tarrytown, New York. May 7th is the Psychic Fair at the Plymouth, in Plymouth, Massachusetts. May 11th, the Holistic Fair at, in Chicago, Illinois. May 16th, the Boom Business Expo at the Hilton Hop Hog, Long Island. Uh, May 19th, the Psychic Fair at the Hampton Inn. And June 19th is the Psychic Fair at the Courthouse Marriott. So, yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> So yeah, those are our uh, upcoming events for Magnitude. Uh, and speaking of upcoming events, um, we will not have an Unger the Radar next Sunday due to Easter observance, but we will uh, keep you up to date uh, with some upcoming events. There might be a special event this week, um, so stay tuned for that. And also, please feel free to subscribe on the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, uh, like the comments, the posts on Twitter, and of course, follow on Instagram as well. And yeah, so I want to thank you guys once again. Thanks for, Thanks having, for having us. Yes. Amazing to have all of you here. And uh, hope to have you on again real soon. I'll, well, I'll be back. All right, <laughs> you know, cool. I'll yeah, get me. you'll all be back. You can't right. get rid of me. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Good night. Take care, guys. Winter is coming. <laughs>